were discussing oscillators, uh, phase noise and figure of merit. I made some mistakes in the expressions for the ring oscillator. Now, these expressions are correct okay, with the model that I chose this is fine okay. and also with the model that I chose it turns out that if you uh, look at each stage right. with this type of model what happens is when uh, some node is rising that inverter is drawing a current of IP whatever the top current source is right. And if you uh, look at the total current that will be a constant at IP ok. So, with this model the current actually the current drawn from the supply is not changing it is a constant value of IP ok. So, that is fine. So, VDD times IP is the power dissipated in the ring oscillator. So, this was ok. I think the problem was with so when I calculate this uh, S phi of f, I should calculate it the double side. I should calculate the double sided spectral density. Okay, so that is for f uh, both more than zero and less than zero and one side of that will be the phase noise L of f that is how we have been doing it right. We have been calculating double sided S phi of f. So, in doing that I had made two mistakes first of all you know that this is the spectral density of the MOS transistor, but it is single sided right. This is the expression you use for white noise when it goes from 0 to infinity when it goes from minus infinity to infinity this should be 4 thirds ok. Then similarly, there was one more uh, translation going from uh, <coughs> uh, here to there. So, basically there is another factor of 2 error in these places ok. So, basically totally there is a factor of 4 error. So, this is just 8 by 3 ok. So, the phase noise expression was uh, whatever I gave last time was off by a factor of 4 it is 8 third k t by v g s minus v t times i p f naught square by f square ok. And uh, again intuitively it made sense even earlier because it is only the numerical scaling factor that has changed. If you increase i p or increase v g s minus v t this uh, phase noise will decrease ok. And similarly if you try to make an oscillator at a higher frequency then the phase noise will become worse if you try to do it with the same power ok. So, now So, here this should be 8 by 3, 8 by 3 and 3 by 8 ok. Now, please calculate this FOM for uh, VGS minus VT equals 1 fourth of the supply. There are a lot of crude approximations here because it does not remain in the saturation region, but you can just calculate it and see. This is uh, basically 3 by 8 1 by 4 times 10 to the minus 21 times 1 by 4 10 to the minus 3 ok. So, these two give you 10 to the 18 and this gives you 3 divided by 128 ok. Yeah. So, this is uh, this is basically 180 dB and this is plus 5 dB and this is minus 
3 d b is 2 to the 7. So, minus 21 d b. So, 185 minus 21. So, 164 d b. Okay. That is the figure of merit. And in fact, it gets worse if uh, you use a larger V d d and so on. Okay. The same V g s minus V d. This fine. Yeah, this uh, finally everything cancels out and it becomes independent of the number of stages. Yeah. So, if you design let us say for 1 gigahertz, you design either a 3 stage oscillator or a 5 stage oscillator, what will happen is that the current drawn by each stage and the capacitance at each stage will also be different because finally, uh, in one case like 6 times the delay should be equal to 1 nanosecond, in the other case like 10 times the delay should be equal to 1 nanosecond. Now, if you adjust everything so that it is drawing the same amount of power from the power supply, then uh, it will also have the same phase noise, the two will have the same phase noise, but I guess the same frequency. Okay. So, this is in that way like a fundamental calculation. So, it does not, it is not sensitive to the number of stages and so on. Okay. And similarly, uh, like there are many ways of changing the frequency of a ring oscillator. For instance, you have a let us say a 3 stage oscillator, you want to make a lower frequency oscillator, you can add capacitive you can add capacitors to each node that will slow down the oscillator or you can make the transistors longer that will make the gm smaller i mean the current smaller and it will also increase the capacitance okay that will also slow down the oscillator but you do either of these things if you end up with the same frequency you will have the same phase noise so this uh, just let's just keep in mind that this is 164 db then we can compare it to what we have for the lc oscillator so, when you make an oscillator, you can compare it to that. There have been ring oscillator designs which uh, try to improve upon this by doing uh, various things, but there is not like so much room. I mean, you cannot have ring oscillators with a very good phase noise, I mean, certainly not as good phase noise as LC oscillators. Okay. Now, going back to LC oscillators, we said that basically the most common type of LC oscillator is to do this. Okay. There are a number of variants of this. You can see that this is basically a differential pair. connected as a negative resistance okay and it has a current source biasing it from the bottom and how do you make this variable capacitor you typically have what is known as a var actor with this being the control node okay i'll explain how to make the var actor you can see that as far as the bias point is concerned on either side it is equal to V d d right. It is equal to this uh, the center tap voltage which is V d d and like I said uh, with this uh, continuous variation you cannot cover a very wide frequency range. So, typically what you also have is a capacitor array with switches which you make by having capacitors and switches okay you have a number of these things you can switch them in or out of the circuit okay it is like very basic right you you use a larger capacitor you have a, a lower frequency of oscillation and vice versa okay so you can think of this as this is coarse tuning because this tunes the oscillator in jumps when you go from one capacitor to the next the frequency will jump but to adjust the frequency using the negative feedback loop you will need this continuous control which is known as fine tuning okay now what are these things these uh, these are basically what are known as var actors and their capacitance a 
depends on the DC voltage across them. Okay. This is fine. So, the circuit itself is simple just like in ring oscillators, but there are a few variants of this I will show them soon. Now, uh, <coughs> how do you make these varactors? How do you make an electronically variable capacitance on a chip? Yeah, one uh, the traditional way was to make a p n junction diode. So, you have the substrate and you have the n well and inside that you have p. So, let us say you use these, I use these and not the substrate because I want them I mean I want them to be biased independently I do not want to tie everything to ground you know that the substrate has to be connected to the lowest potential right. So, between these two you have a varactor and uh, how does the varactor work? If you increase the DC voltage across these the depletion width increases ok, depletion width is basically the separation between the plate by the way yeah this is a reverse bias p n junction. <coughs> so, the depletion width is the separation between the plates of the capacitor as you increase the DC voltage the depletion width increases which means the separation increases and the capacitance decreases ok. So, this is one way of making the varactor again with uh, lower voltages and uh, so on this is now not the most popular way in uh, modern CMOS processes this is not how you make the varactor. An alternative is to use the MOS device with some modification. First, let us just look at the MOS device by itself. This is a PMOS device and this is an NMOS device, right. Now, let me connect the source and drain together ok and then I change the DC bias between the gate and the source or drain and see what the capacitance is. What will that look like? I could also tie the bulk to this one if necessary or I could be independently biased does not matter, but what will this look like C versus V between the gate of the transistor and the source or drain. You have seen this curve right. Huh? It will be increasing what happens at uh, even negative values of En MOS or small values of En MOS. So, it goes through three regions does this right. So, this is accumulation, this is depletion and this is inversion ok. So, C does vary with V, you could potentially use this, do you foresee any problems here using this in a using this in a clock and data recovery using this in a VCO which is used in a clock and data recovery circuit. <coughs> what is that? Oh, that is what we want right, we want the frequency to vary with the voltage 
and this is a VCO. So, this capacitor is used in the used to control the frequency of an LC oscillator. Huh? Yeah, but that is not important actually, linearity is not important. But I mean, just from a sort of control system point of view, I mean, you have this type of curve. What do you what does the CDR do to correct frequencies? If I go on increasing the control voltage, does the frequency increase or decrease? If I use this in a use this in an oscillator, decreases, increases. Oh, what do you say? Frequency will increase. No, but what happens if you go on increasing? So, this is non monotonic right. So, it will uh, the capacitance is decreasing and then increasing. By the way, this uh, the actual operation of the LC oscillator is quite complicated in that if I set the voltage at this point, it is not as though it is an LC tank with this particular capacitance okay? because if you look at these two nodes right they will have large sinusoidal signals across them so the varactor also it will be in uh, <coughs> different regions for different portions of the cycle of course if you take the another point like this the average capacitance over the cycle will be different and the frequency will change but in this case it is non monotonic so, it is not clear. So, initially the frequency will increase because the capacitance is decreasing and then again the frequency may decrease. Okay, This is clearly not good right. I mean in a negative feedback uh, loop you need to have monotonicity of control otherwise uh, because you you set it up. So, that let us say if the frequency is lower the up signal keeps on coming. So, increase the voltage, Okay, but then if you increase the voltage frequency decreases then it goes in the other direction. Okay. So, this is not great. <coughs> So, without going into device details, I will just show you what is done. The MOS varactor that is most often used is a device that is fabricated inside the N well like a PMOS, but it is not a PMOS, these junctions are also N plus. Okay. So, these N plus and this N well are connected together. So, this device I will call it N MOS in N well. Okay. So, everything is connected together right the N well and the source and drain are connected together. I mean this is not a transistor at all you cannot use it like that, but this is just used as a capacitor. Okay. Now, in this case it turns out that the the curve looks like this it is monotonic and it goes and stops somewhere it actually it is either in the accumulation region or in the depletion region that is all. Okay. <coughs> Is it okay? control node and the output of the oscillator. I mean we already do right that is the varactor. Ah. You mean you are uh, thinking of some arrangement where the capacitor sees only D C is it? That I think is not possible right. Yeah, yeah. So, for instance, I mean in this case, at least in a differential oscillator, it is not clear how you might do that. So, this is how it is, this is the control voltage. Okay. Now, this uh, the left side is let us say going like that and the right side is going that way. 
Okay. So, there is no V control that will make the voltage across them DC, right. So, DC value of V control is uh, fine, but anyway this is not a problem actually this is in some ways good in that even if the C V curve is somewhat abrupt because uh, you are looking at the average capacitance right, the actual F V curve will be smoother okay? because it is not as though at this point you are operating as this capacitance right, it is getting averaged over the swing and here it is getting averaged over the swing. So, the difference will be smaller. So, the actual thing gets moved out. Okay. <coughs> anyway, I mean this is not a particular problem I just mentioned that that will happen in this case it becomes non monotonic. Okay. And I think fundamentally in an oscillator the capacitor has to see the crank voltage or some fraction of it otherwise it is not participating in oscillation and probably not influencing the frequency. Okay. <coughs> so, this n mos and n well character is uh, quite common. So, this is what is used. So, the way you make it is I mean uh, so the gate will be to the control voltage this is the gate and I will use the mos symbol, but keeping in mind that this is not actually a mos transistor and the drain and source are connected to that side and this is the control voltage this is the oscillators uh, nodes okay is it is it okay this is the basic lc vco lc vco consists of non chip inductor a spiral inductor you make a sp plane on spiral inductor that is frequently the bottleneck its quality factor will be poor and that is the bottleneck and for the capacitor you have to use a variable capacitor for that you use the varactor and you have to also extend the tuning range typically uh, and also correct for process variations and so on. So, you have uh, a, a coarse tuning bank of uh, switch capacitors okay, which you switch in so that you bring the oscillation frequency close to what you want it what you want and then uh, and then you let the continuous time control take over from there. Okay. So, if you plot the oscillation frequency of the VCO versus the control voltage, you will see it typically curves like this, <coughs> it may be increasing or decreasing. I mean, it can have either positive or negative slope, it does not matter, but I will show it as positive slope. Now, this will be for one particular setting of the discrete capacitor bank. If you increase that, if you switch in one more capacitor the frequency will lower, if you switch in one more the frequency will lower and so on. Okay. So, this is how you make the stuff and you have to make sure that you have to make sure that there are no gaps in the frequency right that is when you jump from curve 1 to curve 2 the highest frequency of uh, curve 1 should be higher than the lowest frequency of curve 2 otherwise there will be gaps you will not be able to cover some frequency at all and the PLL will fail sometime. Okay. And secondly the <coughs> the amount of uh, tuning range covered by the fine tuning any comment on this can we make this very small One advantage of making this fine tuning range small is the slope of this is the KVCO, right? KVCO we took the VCO's frequency to be directly proportional or uh, linearly dependent on the voltage, but in reality it will be some nonlinear curve, and this slope is KVCO. Now, the smaller this fine tuning range, uh, 
the smaller the value of k v c o which is advantageous in some ways ok. If you have a small k v c o then it will be less sensitive to noise appearing at that node noise coupling to that node ok. So, but is there any constraint on how small we can make this? Yeah, that is correct. Let us assume that there are uh, the overlap is preserved ok. So, the overlap is preserved the steps are also small and the range is small. Now, what happens is that these steps are useful for uh, covering for process variation that is the inductor is not the exact value that you think it is a capacitor is not the exact value because of uh, yeah, process variations and so on. And then also you may want to tune over some range, but once you select one of the steps right as the temperature changes you have to stay in that step ok. The P L L has to be continuously operating this is especially true for serial links. There may be cases where there may be applications where the V C O can be turned off and on, but in serial links you expect the link to be on and then be operating continuously. So, once you stay with the step then all further variations because of whatever reasons should be covered by that particular step. Okay. So, now uh, if you this is for I mean this set of curves is for one particular uh, temperature right for a different temperature these curves will also all be displaced. Basically uh, if you want to cover a given frequency f naught okay. now in this case let us say I have chosen step number 3 over over the entire temperature variation range step number 3 should be able to cover this f naught ok. Otherwise what will happen is I mean let us say your temperature changes then uh, the control loop will adapt ok. The control voltage will change to either left or right and then it will still be working at f naught, but if it comes to the extreme of the range because of uh, temperature change and then you will have to go to coarse tuning again. So, that means that you have to interrupt the operation of the uh, CDR ok. So, that setting up the coarse tuning is like the initial setup right during that you cannot be having this uh, phase locking effect. Sorry I have to take this hello yes uh, sir I am in class I will uh, respond up somewhere. Uh, I will get back to you after the class. So, the fine tuning uh, curve should be such that it will uh, basically cover a given frequency over all the temperature I mean the way entire temperature range ok. Otherwise I mean as the temperature changes the operation will be interrupted if you have to move to another course tuning step you have to interrupt the operation of the PLL and then move ok. Is this fine ok. So, let us me quickly show you the different variants of the LCVCO. I will show the varactor like this and there will be of course, a coarse tuning bank I would not draw the details every time. Now, first of all there is a trivial variant of every one of these it is using PMOS instead of NMOS ok. You can use PMOS transistors instead of NMOS that may have some advantages in uh, some processes at least the flicker noise of the PMOS transistor is lower than flicker noise of the NMOS transistor. On the other hand <coughs> NMOS gives you higher GM for the same size and current. So, you prefer to in higher frequency circuits you prefer to use NMOS ok. So, I will draw everything with uh, I mean NMOS or both NMOS and PMOS if necessary. So, this is one particular variant and this is known as a tail current bias V C O. This means that at the tail of the differential pair you have a bias current I naught ok. Now, 
now instead of this an alternative is to ground this part and put the current source here okay so this also works Now, one possible advantage of this uh, new topology is what is the common mode voltage of the oscillation voltages here? V O P and V O M, what is the common mode voltage of these? Huh? Yeah, what is the common mode voltage here? What is the operating point here at this point and that point? What is that? Why? What is the operating point voltage there? It has to be right, there is the you have the inductor. So, there you cannot have an average voltage across the inductor. Okay. So, this voltage and this voltage will both be at V D D if it was not oscillating, if it is oscillating it will oscillate around V D D. Okay. So, that means that these nodes will go above V D D also. Okay. So, that has a, the couple of problems, one is that it could uh, uh, make the devices unreliable because you have a, a large voltage with respect to ground at some of the nodes in the circuit. And secondly, you will want to take this uh, oscillator output and buffer it, okay? Because this common mode voltage is VDD, and typically a buffer needs an input common mode voltage. I mean, input with a common mode voltage that is midway between zero and VDD. So you have to use either AC coupling or something like that. So that's a bit of a problem also. <coughs> Whereas in this case. What is the common mode voltage of the two outputs? It is easy to calculate the common mode voltage, just think of the bias voltage when there is no oscillation, that is all, or you short V O P and V O M together, right, like in a common mode half circuit. What will that be? No, why is it really minus minus? What sets that voltage? What is that? VGS minus VT of M1, why? Yeah, it is just the VGS of the MOS transistor, right? Like if I short these two nodes, there will be no oscillation, the tank is shorted, okay? So, what happens is I naught by 2 flows here and I naught by 2 flows there, okay? And essentially, for common mode, this is like a diode connected transistor, right? If you fold the two sides, have you done common mode equivalent circuits and analog acid? So, you can fold the two sides, and then by the common mode and equivalent circuit is valid even for nonlinear circuits, right? The differential equivalent is valid only for linear circuits, but the common mode is valid even for nonlinear stuff. So, the voltage here will be VGS of uh, M1 at a current of I0 by 2, okay? <coughs> it is whatever it is. So, it will be between midway between uh, uh, VDD and ground for small VDDs and you could potentially directly couple the buffer whether you actually do it or not is up to you. you could Want to, you may want to use AC coupling even in this case, okay? And even here, you could use inverters for buffering. Is a self-biased inverter, and then use a chain of uh, inverters for buffering the VCU output. Okay? So these are the two variants, and uh, they have some advantages and so on. Uh, the second one has some advantages. Now, sometimes what is done is you try to adjust so L and C, it is understood that C consists of the varactor as well as uh, this uh, fixed uh, switch capacitor bank. Okay. So, now in an attempt to increase the G m for the same current.
current you use both p mos and n mos cross coupled pair okay small signal wise this m1 and m2 is offering some negative resistance m3 and m4 is some offering some other negative resistance these two negative conductances add up okay while the same bias current flows through both of them so that way it is advantageous and in a large signal sense what happens is that if you compare this to the other case where so in case where you have only n mos right so you assume that m1 and m2 switch completely because of the sinusoidal voltage the voltage here will be something like that right so when this voltage is greater than that voltage you assume that m2 is on and m1 is off this is one of the ways of uh, simplifying the analysis of uh, such a circuit when m2 is on this i not will be flowing through like that okay whereas here when m2 is on it will be flowing that way and then in the other phase it will complete the in completely invert the uh, current okay so basically the switched current Uh, the current that is switched through the tank is higher when you have both n mos and p mos that you can work out okay this is fine that is basically if you imagine that see these oscillators are all like uh, they go into like highly nonlinear regimes and so on but let's assume that that's not the case that is if you did assume that these voltages are such that none of these transistors goes deep into triode region then what happens is the amplitude would be higher in this than in that one okay because current is being switched from both sides you can calculate that but typically with a modern uh, uh, process where you have a supply voltage of 1 volt you adjust the amplitude so that everything does go into saturation and then you get a peak to peak value of about vdd okay so that's how you design this that's why i'm also not going too much into the analysis of this because the earlier on people would design these things with transistors in saturation region but that's not how we do it now okay you try to maximize the amplitude if you try to do it beyond a certain level the phase noise gets worse because of some other reasons <coughs> but you adjust it so that this amplitude here is a good fraction of vdd at least 3/4 of vdd or something like that okay so anyway you use both uh, n and p mos it is uh, of some advantage okay you can imagine that if you at least small signal wise the gms are getting added up right of the n mos and p mos so you need a smaller current to make a given oscillator start up okay now for every one of these things there is a another counterpart which is I mean, people try to make it even simpler. You get rid of the current source altogether. Okay, you have it like this. what is the vgs of these transistors in the quiescent condition when there is no oscillation what's the vgs of those transistors it is vdd so actually in this case the current is very strongly dependent on vdd you have to use some particular value of vdd so that this works properly if you try 
lower VDD, it may not oscillate or at least the oscillation amplitude will be too small. If you try a too high a VDD, then there will be uncontrolled amount of current flowing and it may not even work very well. Okay. So, this type of uh, an oscillator as always it has to be used with a low dropout regulator. Okay. And you have to kind of sense the amplitude, the actual oscillation amplitude and adjust the voltage here, so that you attain a certain oscillation amplitude. Okay. Otherwise, I mean the current in this is totally uncontrolled, this is like connecting VDD across a diode connected transistor. So, depending on process and voltage variation, the current can become very large, uh, that is not useful. But this sometimes, uh, basically what this avoids is, you have the extra current source here, right? the current source has its own noise that also contributes to phase noise. In this case of course, the idea is that the current, there is no current source, so obviously there is no noise from the current source. On the other hand, you do have the low dropout regulator which has transistors. So, the noise from those transistors will contribute to phase noise. So, you have to figure out which is a better alternative and then use that one. Okay. And this can be done with every one of them. That is, of course, if I remove the current source from the bottom or current source from the top, I end up with the same circuit. right? I mean, if I remove this current source or that current source and connect it directly to VDD, it is the same circuit. But the other one, this uh, CMOS stuff where you have both PMOS and NMOS, there also you can remove the current source and connect the bottom directly to ground. Okay. So, you have basically both voltage and current biased VCOs. Okay. I would not go too much into too much further into detail, you can uh, look at some textbooks for some possible fine advantages and disadvantages of these things. But like I said, these things you design, simulate and then try to optimize the designs using simulation. Okay. Now, the key to any oscillator, LC oscillator design is to somehow keep the Q quality factor of the tank as high as possible. This is not only choosing the right inductor, but also every the layout is very important. Okay. You can actually have a good uh, inductor, but then you can have long wires connecting to that and then ruin the uh, phase noise. Okay. So, the quality factor is extremely important. So, the higher the quality factor, the better the phase noise as we will see. Now, just like we had a model for the <coughs> ring oscillator, there are a couple of models which have been used to analyze the phase noise of the LC oscillator. One is, I think I have mentioned this before. You have L, C, and R P, which represents the loss of the tank, and then you have minus R P, which compensates. This is the active part of the circuit. This is basically an ideal linear LC oscillator, okay? Or maybe I'll denote these as conductances. Right. Now, this of course, does not exist in reality, you do not have a linear circuit like this. Uh, what is closer to reality is that you have L, C and G P and you have a transconductance of value g n and you connect it in positive feedback. Okay. Now, let us say if this is V and the current that is coming out is I, this I versus V will be something like that. And again an idealized model is to assume a straight line with some saturation. and the slope here will be g n. Okay. Now, if the block is operating in this region, if you connect it like that, it offers a negative conductance of minus g n. Right? So, this is how it works. Now, this ideal linear LC oscillator, this has been used, this was used in one of the early analysis by Leeson and Leeson had a phase noise model for which he use this 
and although this is uh, very approximate and not quite correct, it predicts many key features of the phase noise of an LC oscillator correctly. Now, these things will do better. Now, one of the unrealistic things about this ideal oscillator is this can oscillate with any amplitude, right? Because finally, if GP cancel, the GP and minus GP are cancelled, you just have L and C. So, the amplitude depends only on the initial condition. Whereas, here this will converge to a given amplitude, ok. We assume that now this G n is greater than G p, this is necessary for starting up the oscillation. Once that is done, the oscillation amplitude it will eventually settle to some amplitude which depends on this i max and minus i max. So, this will oscillate with a definite amplitude, ok. And this is a closer representation of what we have in reality. If you look at the differential pair with the tail current source, that is pretty much like this, right? The tail current is I max because it can either switch I max in this direction or that direction. So, that is what it is, ok. Any questions here? So, again, I will not go into the model and derivation of phase noise from this model, but I will give you the key results just like I did for the ring oscillator in the next class, ok. So, we have some. Uh, figure of merit and some phase noise assuming the idealized models and when you make a real oscillator you can compare it to 